I, I have many people worry about their parents or, or their, their family. So they now they say, okay, now I actually feel safer than, at work than home. So <laughs> now it's the security we had, you know. So it's funny, actually, I had people telling me this. It's like, man, you guys are going above and beyond, you know. Hey, it's Ari Santiago, President and CEO of IT Direct. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Made in America podcast, COVID-19 edition. I'm uh, really excited. I've got uh, Abraham Abraham here from Lynn Welding. Uh, you may remember uh, Darius Kanya, one of our early Made in America guests. So it's really exciting to have uh, his operations manager on today to talk about all the exciting stuff they're doing to be so prepared for uh, COVID-19 uh, and beyond. So Abraham, thank you so much for uh, coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Well, listen, it's uh, the Made in America podcast, so we're going to start off with our same two questions. Abraham, what do you make? Why do you make it? Uh, so Lynn Welding is a, a manufacturing company. We provide uh, welding services, uh, all kind of welding, uh, resistance welding, which is like our main department. We also do provide uh, TIG welding, uh, brazing. Uh, we also just added last year uh, our robotic welding, that's automation welding. Uh, besides that, we also provide a CNC machining uh, tooling. Uh, we make a lot of fixturing for um, defense and medical contracts. And uh, our our main uh, industry is actually uh, defense, which is we're blessed to have it because uh, right now we're we're staying busy even with the COVID situation. Sure. Yeah. Def- I mean, listen, you're in aerospace, which is which is tough unless you're in defense aerospace, which is uh, where you guys are, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, one of our goals, obviously, through the podcast is try and help the community uh, learn and grow. And I think uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on today was just the level of preparedness that Lynn Welding had uh, for COVID-19 and what you guys have done to keep the operation running uh, and healthy and even get ready for post-COVID-19 has been really exciting. So, um, you know, maybe you could start by uh, telling the audience uh, why it was that you guys were so ahead of the curve and how, how ahead of the curve you were when you guys really started the preparing well we I, uh, we started from march 2nd i remember like uh sunday march 1st it was i called darius our vice president i was like hey man we're gonna get ready this covid 19 is hitting connecticut uh, sooner than later we're gonna get started and one of the reasons that triggered me i was overseas uh, back in february and uh, i saw how the airports are being prepared and how like you're checking your temperature and all these things so it's been in the back of my mind and then when there were a first case reported in New York City in uh, March 1st, I believe, that's when I actually started to be like, okay, with, with all the Metro North, like traveling between Connecticut and New York, I said, it's definitely like within a couple of weeks, we're going to be hit, you know. So we started with actually having a very basic education, internet education and basic measures. So March 2nd, I met, me and Darius met with our actually uh, team leader, production manager, foreman. And we came up with a very basic plan. Like we kind of drafted or pencil out what's going to happen for the next, uh, from March 2nd to March 9th. We kind of made it week by week as we following the news. So we end up having small groups of five and uh, kind of educate everybody about uh, what does COVID-19 mean? What is the same thing said? And what thing is measures we have in place? Also, since March 2nd, we've been having a daily disinfection procedure. So every touching point in this facility and the other facility across the street, they get fully disinfected daily. So right, our our standard uh, cleaning procedure, we do it once a week on Saturdays. But now with all with the situation, we decided to do it daily. When we have a three personnel that volunteered internet to do it, so they kind of rotate. And uh, so wait, so so just so we understand, so you guys were doing a cleaning procedure weekly prior, but then starting in March, you decided to go daily. Uh, What does that cleaning procedure uh, look like? What do you include in terms of what gets cleaned uh, in the procedure? So uh, the disinfection, we call it disinfection procedure. So we everything, any touching point, so any uh, door handles, uh, any access ways, like uh, any computer dashboard, every office, every. Uh, everything that like uh, like uh, everything you would touch if you're walking inside the facility, all the machines, keyboard, the control uh, control like board, we have to disinfect it. All the table, work table, all the tooling, 
and also an inspection uh, uh, like surface sprayed uh, shipping area fully get disinfected sprayed and also bathrooms uh, kitchen and uh, like anything like you, you would get to touch like the, the iPads uh, anything everything like, Everything. Just just to give people a sense of how much cleaning we're talking about, you guys have two facilities and how many employees? Uh, right now we have roughly uh, 70 employees. Okay. Yeah, so across two facilities, 70 employees. And what are you guys using as your cleaning solution? We we use uh, Lysol and we also use alcohol when we run out of Lysol. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we use like uh, like 150 proof green alcohol and we use isopropyl alcohol, whichever available. Uh, we got locked up because we started way early, so we were able to source these supplies. And uh, also, since March 2nd, uh, we had a, uh, we had our cleaning company came and install like uh, hand sanitizing stations in every corner of the company. So we everybody started to feel like, okay, this is getting serious. This guy is not like it's not just like uh, having like a basic information. No, this seems like we take it serious. And the beginning, there was the people wasn't really mentally prepared because the news was like, it was still mild, like just everybody's talking about it. But uh, we're getting through like mid-March, that's when actually, uh, when we started to be very engaged with employees and change it. Uh, I don't want to bore you with, the, with a lot of information, but uh, we pretty much re reestablished how we operate every day. And what were some of the most important, I mean, when you think about trying to keep the operation going, keep the employees safe, you know, what were some of the main things you guys felt you had to do to make the employees feel comfortable coming to the, coming to the facility every day? Well, I, th I think the most important thing is actually we come up with a plan and we have to communicate it with our team because the people need to know what you've been working on. So every single week we issue like a, some kind of flyer or news of here is, here is the thing that we've been working on. And one of the things is that we implemented after the second week of March, we actually uh, ban all the visitors. We set up a uh, disinfection station uh, on the receiving department. So there is no pickup or drop off happening uh, inside the facility. So if we have a customer dropping off or picking up, everything happens outside the facility. The shipping and receiving personnel is wearing PPEs and face masks since March sec uh, since second week of March. Uh, our driver is wearing uh, face mask, and we communicate all these things to our employees because this is the areas where you're gonna get most of, mostly exposed to the virus. Because we have we have so many trucks in and out all day long. So when you set up these boundaries and measures, people people when they go in for a break, they see they see how we prepared. You know. Uh, also, when the bars come in, being an aerospace welding company, we require to actually do a uh, cleaning prior to welding. Uh, and it's like a, it could be mechanical cleaning or like a, or like a, just a basic chemical cleaning. So with with the current situation, we're trying to be still being efficient. So we came up with, with an idea that actually we need to disinfect the bars when they come in because some local customers they send it in a plastic bin, and you don't know what's in what's in these bars or if it has any kind of. Uh, uh, co like contamination on this material, you know. So what we did is actually we perform our standard receiving inspection, and then we we disinfected the bars, acetone or alcohol wash them prior getting them inside the building. So every single bar coming in get disinfected before we release it into the building, which is uh, it 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 seemed like a lot of burden, but we end up actually doing the cleaning right in the beginning. In a standard way, we used to receive the bars, put them in the shelves, and then when they come in the queue ready for production that's when we perform the cleaning so as long as there is no uh, strict time frame for cleaning we did everything prior to release it inside the building so when the people get the parts uh, our team they they actually know that this part is being disinfected so they feel more comfortable you know sure. and and again the main thing is actually you have to let your team know that here is the thing that we're working on so the uh, i got a lot of good internal feedback that the, the people are telling me that they feel very safe coming to work. They not worry about like going back home with something to their family, you know. Right. So, as absent, absenteeism has really not been much of a problem. Not really. Uh, we obviously anybody within the risky age group, we we had we set them up to work remotely from home, and uh, but most of the team was still in, in sight. 
if only the, anybody in the, like a health issue, we obviously we had them uh, set up to work from home. And then everybody else was here, so that everybody was showing up on time. Everybody was actually trying to um, to get together. And we, were, we had this message that we kind of spread around. It says, like, we are in the same boat, so we're going to work together. We're going to survive together. So everybody is like, trying to help, you know. So we 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 kind of set it up in a in like in a way that um, here is what we are against, and the only way to get through it is we have to work together. It's not it's not something common. We 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 wasn't sure that this is gonna happen, but now we have it. So let's let's just get to, get through it. You know. What have been some of the biggest questions you've seen from the employees, or some of the biggest concerns that people have had that you've had to address? The biggest thing is. Uh, most of the team members was worried, like, what is our plan if someone was tested positive for COVID-19? Uh, uh, the other question, are we okay financially? And all, this was still normal. And then the, the third question I had a lot is actually, uh, are we going to close? Because uh, we, uh, many of our neighbor companies, we hear like they shut down for a week, this guy shut down for two weeks. And uh, so what what we did is actually uh, with the, within the social distance we set up a meeting with group of four. We, we reserved a full day, me and Daria Scania, our vice president, and we sat down at a table with a group of four within social distance, six feet apart, and we answered all these questions. We had a, a very clear plan. Uh, if we have someone like tested positive, because we have a separation plan. So every if you work in an area, this zone is going to be actually locked up for the rest of the day for 24 hours, and we're going to have a disinfection procedure to open all the doors, pretty much disinfect anything in these machines, tooling, uh, everything. We're going to be sprayed, and then we're going to open back up, resume operation uh, second day. Besides that, anybody who's exposed uh, to the person that was tested positive, obviously will stay home for two weeks and until they get uh, cleared by the doctor. So we we obviously addressed this to the team, and they will start to be like, okay, are we closing? We said, no, we're not closing. There's no, this is not an option. We're gonna work through it as a team. We are in the same boat. We're gonna keep repeating the um, Bush positivity to the team. Uh, and then the good thing is we we're financially stable as a company. We don't have uh, any debt, so we're kind of very very strong financially. We we don't try to buy ourselves with things above our means. So we communicated this to our team in terms of like how how much uh, available cash we have and and actually what is our plan. So we said uh, if we if our deposit coming from our customer is reducing by this percentage, here is what's gonna happen. We're gonna cut the overtime a little bit. If our uh, our expenses uh, is, is getting higher for like because you're buying supplies, you you have a lot of burden. Your operation is not fully efficient. With everything happening. Here is the scenario. Here is how we're gonna act. So we had, we had to revise our contingency plan. We had to, but everything we do, we communicated second day right away with the team. So everybody uh, was very well informed. We set up uh, a text messaging, uh, mass text messaging. So we actually all communicating through our payroll company. So we send messages uh, like a reminder to the team: don't don't touch your face in a funny way or like. Uh, <laughs> Cough to elbow, or like stay six feet apart. Things like this. We keep we 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 have our graphic teams. We make like a funny emojis. So we're trying to actually make it in a funny way. So we kind of make the team more like a being positive about it. You know. Yep. And has it been effective? It's been very effective, actually. Yeah. Like everybody uh, since like third week of March, it start to feel very comfortable with all the measures we have, and. Uh, Everybody, we, we have a very, very good group of people. So everybody is actually trying to actually help and, and go in the same direction. We didn't have a lot of resistance from people because they also, they know how serious it is, but they also see how much hard work we're putting to this. Like when they see the company leaders, like, uh, like as I was mentioning, like uh, I spent uh, in a normal day, sometimes I'm not on the floor for three days, I'm stuck in my office doing basic operation rules. But with this happening, I've been in the floor every single day, showing, uh, smiling, just trying to get, uh, show that I'm strong. And, and same thing for Darius and John, the owners. So we're showing that we're very strong and actually this is going to be okay. 
people actually want to see your face, want to see how you how you look like. If you look like it's stressed, they're gonna get stressed automatically. It's like uh, it's like it's like contagious, you know. Yep. Same like Corona, pretty much. So if you're <laughs> smiling, <laughs> people are gonna smile, you know. So that's what I, I'm doing every day. Is actually I'm smiling. I'm kind of like almost reconnecting with my team more. So it's a it's a good opportunity to actually reconnect, uh, being a leader in the company, to reconnect with everybody in the floor, explain to them things that we work on, and actually repeat the same message. Like when someone tells you, I'm scared, I'm worried, and you have to say, no, everything is going to be fine. We have a very strong cleaning procedure. We, we are maintaining a strong measures. And uh, we, the most important, we all like one family here. So we will get through it. Don't worry. And then you kind of like, push the same positivity and after a while it just become a, a normal thing you know so no that's great what have you noticed from you know, i mean i know that uh, early on you guys were actually busier than normal um what have you noticed because you've talked a little bit about these extra cleaning procedures you know the way things are happening a little bit of extra steps uh, and we're, i want to talk about your zoning in a second but what have you seen from just an output perspective have you guys been able to maintain output has it been hampered a little bit because of the extra steps you're taking uh, actually, what we did is we end up adding uh, like almost like an hour extra for everyone that that especially we have committed uh, uh, like uh, defense uh, delivery dates that we cannot miss. So <laughs> we end up explaining this to the team that okay, we have a lot of birdium. Like when you receive the part in a normal day, you can receive it in an hour. Right now with the disinfection, it could delay for three hours, and sometimes you have to ship these parts within 24 hours. So you have a very time narrow time frame you still have to process contract review has to go like full like quality review so we actually end up explaining yes we are adding bergium we're slowing things down but it's for your safety and health and well-being so you're gonna work with us by actually stay an extra uh, late time if you have to or come in early and actually people have been very cooperative because they know you have a strong reason you're not slowing things down just because you want to slow it down, you know. Right. So the team actually has been like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. But uh, I, I feel like the main thing too is actually when 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 you during this time when when you have everybody being uncertain and everybody have a lot of things happening outside work, which is a child care or they worry about their job or they worry about their parents, like they have older parents. So everybody in general is having this kind of like. Uh, being having anxiety going on so when you come into work you want to make a, the workplace is more like this is a place they can escape from any issues having outside <laughs> work we'll make it actually uh, very easy for them we spend more time and more effort of actually explaining re-explaining again sometimes we will uh doesn't understand why you're doing things this way so he, I, I i didn't mind to actually spend one-to-one -one meeting uh with individuals that is not sure about why we're doing things this way and uh, it ends up actually having a, a very good impact because when they go back to the floor, they work harder because they say, okay, these guys are also working harder to protect me, you know. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you guys have been doing to help keep people protected? Talk a little bit about the zoning you guys have been doing. I know you've got individual cards you give to people. I mean, you guys have really taken it to another level. Maybe you could explain to the audience, you know, share with them what you guys have been doing. So uh, we end up uh, having uh, a, a, like a team team effort meeting, and uh, we kind of plan. Okay, this looks like it's gonna be for a while, so we have to actually c become more creative about it, and because we want to actually make it very clear. When if we have a case, so far we didn't have any cases, but if we ever have a case, we want to have a very clear procedure. What's gonna happen? So what, we made a separation plan, we call it a separation plan. So we break down every department, uh, to a, every department was break, broken down to a zone. And actually every, this zone, uh, this team, they come from a separate door from the morning. So when the people come in the morning, they don't gather in one door. And you have a, a whole separate door number, their names are listed in every door. So you cannot just use any door. Like in normal days, they will just walk to any available door, you know. So we have no specific door you walk in, you go through a temperature check with our receiving inspector. So the receiving inspector receives the bus, he's also receiving people. <laughs> so he'll let you in or out, so you check your temperature, and then you go to a specific clock in a station. When you go to the station, there is a, 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 there is a social distance set up, so you cannot be gathering. You have to stay in the line, 
And when you clock in, you walk to a different door. So you don't actually walk back. So you face the person this way. You need to walk to a different door. And then you're the, we have these cards that we made. Uh, I don't know if you see, but every yeah, yeah, employee yeah, has their department, their zone number, their bathroom number. So they have to use a very specific bathroom. They can't just use any available bathroom. And every every bathroom or clock in the station has the names listed on it. So you have to use, like this, this gentleman right here, he has a bathroom number six, workstation number, and then the break times. So we had to actually do a lot of investigation, which guys are actually going out for lunch together and carpool. And we tried to actually, in a, in a funny way, we had to let the guys know, okay, we know you guys go hang out at lunch, we're gonna split you, because we don't wanna be able to carpool together, because that's, <laughs> that's defeating the virus. Like we're doing all this work to protect them, you know? And people are actually laughing about it because we're like, they're try we're like having it in a very friendly, funny way. So uh, again, like to make people actually engage with us. So we had the people having a different lunch breaks and we ban also the cafeteria. So nobody eats lunch in the cafeteria. You, can, you have to just eat in your car on your workstation as long as you clean. So no FOD. And also um, what else we have here? Um, so pretty much everything is is broken to zones. Super organized. Yeah. How long yeah. did it take you to put all this together? Uh, we had a three-day Kaizen. So we, uh, we had we had a team and uh, we actually uh, spent like one uh, uh, pretty much uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday, full day, Sunday, full day. And then Monday morning, uh, we started to roll out. We meet with the groups. Okay, now we're actually working this zone. This is your area. You cannot leave it. If you need something from different department, you need to go to your supervisor. So everybody's locked up in one zone and and everybody, we had to actually walk people to, here's your specific bathroom, here's your specific clock in the station, here's your door when you come in, and people come in from one door and leave from different doors. Really? So it's like a flow. So it, it had a lot of planning. Uh, I'm going to show you one thing. So everybody get, get a bag like this and they get a very clear instruction of actually... Everything was like uh, things that you need to help us on, and and also the the doors that you have to use. And then the back here, um, there is a map highlight where you go and like where which bathroom you're using. So everything is identified in a map. So no question asked. Everybody has to be just uh, maintaining. And the, the guys was actually very 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 um, adaptive to it because they found it actually, uh, they found it really, really helpful. And they, again, like uh, I, I had many people worry about their parents or, or their, their family. So they now they say, okay, now I actually feel safer than, at work than home. <laughs> so now it's the security we had, you know? So it's funny, actually, I had people telling me this. It's like, man, you guys are going above and beyond, you know? So no, you guys thing. have been great. I mean, listen, I, I, you know, I, I've taken some of the stuff you guys have made with your permission and have modified it and used it. We've got Lynn Welding develop signs on our bathroom explaining how to wash hands. Um, and I think you're right. You know, the more we can be prepared, um, you know, listen, it's like every other manufacturing process, right? You look at what needs to happen. You design the process, audit the process, improve the process, you know, uh, audit the process, improve the process, implement the process, audit the process. I mean, right. It's yeah. the same, same thing as how you do anything else. Um, um, so I guess I, that, let's start, you know, I've talked and we talked a little bit earlier about sort of my idea about sort of the different stages of this crisis, right? The stage one change, stage two, the abnormalcy, which you guys have mastered. And let's talk a little bit about stage four recovery so we can prep for what I'm calling uh, stage three recovery so we can prep for that stage four thrive. You know, as you guys look and, and we're, you, you have all this great stuff, the zoning, you've done a great job keeping flow, meeting customer needs. What are some of the projects you guys are looking at to take advantage of this time to be able to leave it better on the outside so the other like the other thing we're doing we we know that we might hit a, like a slow down curve which is pretty normal because even we are a defense contractor maybe our customer has a covid situation they have to mm -hmm. shut down so now we're going right. to be impacted so we we're kind of reutilizing our time of actually adding more value to our customers. So right now we're building like a customer portal so the customer can log into our website. We're also like pretty much doing everything using technology, like going paperless, doing all this stuff. So we're actually trying to add more value to the customer because we feel like when this thing boom back, 
uh, when everything gets back to normal and we boom back, we want to actually be more prepared and, we, and the competition is going to be higher. So we want to actually be more also uh, like adding more value so more competitive to our customers. So uh, I, I was asked this question many times. People are telling me how you keep people utilized, especially people that work at home. And uh, one thing we do is actually uh, we re-change the rules. So if you're working at home, obviously you cannot do any hands-on, you cannot touch parts. So we give you more admin work to keep you utilized more. And the person is coming at work, we give them more hands-on. And we explain that this is in barrier with the current situation. So, but the, the, the end of the game is the customer doesn't feel any changes. So we, we, so far, we haven't experienced any negative feedback from our customers. Our, uh, I just got my report for April on-time delivery. Everything is over 95%, which is still good. Fantastic. So, yeah, so we're still hitting our goals, our S9100 goals. Our matrix has been the same. So that's our main thing is actually stay in the goal, stay in the tracks, because the customer doesn't have to deal with our internal uh, situation that's happening. We have this is kind of our rule number one. It's like uh, the customer doesn't have to know. Like I can't tell the customer like I have a COVID situation, so I'm gonna be late for three months. So it doesn't work. No, yeah, you want to be like that duck, right? The customer just sees you gliding on that water underneath, working like crazy to keep it all the same. That's really great. Look, I'm gonna pull on a couple of those things you said because I think they're interesting. So can you talk a little bit about that customer portal? Because I think people hear oh a website login whatever, but it's a little bit more than just a website login. What's the what are you really doing with that customer portal and what's the value you're going to drive with that? So the customer portal is actually right now uh, we have three different production managers who, and the reason we assigned this would break every department or every specific uh, uh, work area to a separate the, the production manager. So we're trying to give the customers the attention they need because we have like thousands of parts we ship every year. So we're trying to give the customer daily updates. We receive your parts. So when the customer receives the job, we receive an update. We receive your reports, and here is the due date. When we start the job, we email the customer. We started your job. We're still on track. And then when we're almost done, we email the customer and say, we're almost done with your job, and here is, uh, here is the, the shipping information. Are you still okay with shipping this job next day air or second day? And then when the job is shipped, we email the customer the tracking information and the shipment picture of the shipment itself. So... Uh, we've been discussing with the COVID situation, we might end up having some disruption. What if someone, what if one of these production managers is out for any medical situation? Now the customer is going to be in back. So we don't want this to happen, you know. So we end up actually talking with our developers and actually link our ERB system to our website. And we created a portal. So this is live connected. And I'm not a technical guy. Maybe you know better, but uh, <laughs> I have people like do this for us. And um, what they do is actually the customer is going to be granted a secure uh, login information and everything obviously is encrypted. And the customer is logging to the website and uh, let's say uh, this customer login, they get a list of all the open jobs we have available. When they click on a specific job, they see when we receive the job, when is the due date, the quantity, and then they also receive uh, a message from our production manager saying we, the job is on hold, for example, we're waiting in a tooling. So it's kind of reaffirming if any communication happened in the past. So this is so it's showing the steps of the job on hold or the job is being processed or the job is being ready to be processed or the job at final inspection or being shipped or outside vendor. And also it allows the customer to actually uh, leave a message to our production manager. So when the customer writes, uh, hey, can you, uh, would you be able to get this job done sooner than like May 12th or December? This, this message go direct to the uh, centralized email. So if the production manager is out, someone else is going to take over and respond so, to the customer within eight hours. So That's amazing. Yeah, so we don't want the customer to feel any impact because we might have someone, uh, let's say we get back to the fall, hopefully, but we might have this another wave of COVID-19 happening again. Hopefully not, but just we're expecting everything. So we're being very prepared. We're saying, okay, the customer doesn't have to send an email and wait for three days. And we say, okay, I'm sorry, because the, uh, our production manager was out sick. That's not his problem. No. So, so someone else would just have to pick up. So the best way is actually to automate it. So the customer, at least when they see like on track, when they log into the, the portal, they're going to see 
the due date is still on track and there is, if there is any issue associated with the job, we will see a message. And also, they can automatically generate a report of everything they have at Lane Welding. They can present it to their team if they have like internal production meeting in their facility. So it's, it's saving a lot of time to my team too, which is great because the, our team can actually spend more time on focusing efficiency, adding more other values to the customer, reducing cycle times and other things. So it's, a, it's more of actually giving a live update so the customer can. That's per. Listen, I mean, talk talk about you know continuous improvement and value add, right? You just like you're using this COVID situation, giving you an opportunity to take a look at something and realize, hey, by making this investment here and putting this technology change in play, you can automate some of the processes, take out some of the human, you know, administrative steps. To your point, to add more value uh, and make it more reliable. I mean, that's a that that's just to me uh, gold, uh, right Thanks. there. Yeah, that's gold. That's gold. Talk a little bit about, you mentioned, um, and I think this is something that's really interesting. You know, we've talked a lot about the fact that in manufacturing, and you alluded to it, a lot of stuff's obviously hands-on, right? The beauty of manufacturing, we're making something, uh, and that's hard to do from your home, right? Um, and so you would talk something really interesting I haven't heard before, which is there's people who just for medical reasons, uh, their age, uh, you know, we have someone here that had a double lung transplant. So, you know, that's really risky. It's just not right. So so obviously in my IT world, it's a little bit easier. Uh, but you had talked about something about how you shifted some responsibilities around. And I don't know, you know, maybe you could just quickly give an overview of how you guys did that so for example um if we have like any given department you have admin work admin tasks and you have like sales department for example you have people that does admin work like sending quotes and receiving quotes process data back and forth and then you have people that spend the more time of talking with customer seeing the part evaluate the part so in, uh, a good thing is we have always in every department backup so we have at least two three people in each department that back up each other so the, the team members that they have to stay home because of their age group or the health issue, we give them pretty much all the admin work. So they can actually do most admin work. Like what home. admin work are we talking about? Like paperwork? Like like what's the breakdown? Uh, so admin work could be like analysis data. Like let's okay. say we can analysis data coming, uh, review uh, data. So everybody, of, I'm sure like every single person work, they have admin admin time and sure. like yeah. daily so they can focus more of actually the admin time they pick up more of admin like if someone has to do analysis on a report for like sales for example they can do it for them even if it's not outside their scope ah. so, so what i'm saying like for example if you have john like john chris and ashley for example and everybody has the admin tasks and Ashley has to stay home. So you give her all the admin work to do at home. And the other guys pick up the other like phone calls or the things that they have to like communicate or go to the floor and do it here. Let's say if you have a first article inspection, for example. So uh, if you're, you're processing BART, so you have to do a physical inspection, and then you have to plug in the data on the computer mm -hmm. to, to make a, generate a first article inspection. So the person staying home is the person that you can scan the paperwork for him and he or she can plug in the data and submit it to the customer. And the person that here, they can physically check the parts and, and send the data to the person at home. So it's kind of like uh, we're trying to make it win-win. And also we're trying to actually not add more load to the people that here so they, they start to feel like they're being overwhelmed by carrying other people's responsibility. And the people at home, they feel bad because they're being underutilized. They get not, not much to do. So we're actually kind of, again, repeated as we are in the same boat. We're going to have to help each other until we get through this. So we have to kind of do a minor shift like uh, uh, on the people that work home, give them more admin. And the people that work here, they still do a lot of hands-on, but everybody's still not overwhelmed. Because it's very important for us that I, I personally hate to see someone stressed because they're coming to work and they have to stay late because they just other people are yeah, out. Totally, and develop yeah, develop resentment and all that. That's really, Abraham. This is like super fantastic. I mean, you guys yeah, are thanks. doing some really, uh, some really uh, exciting, exciting stuff, dude. I, I really appreciate it. But as no, we're kind of wrapping up, anything else you want to add that you guys are doing, kind of in the in the in the time right now to be able to look to uh, to improve or, or get better for the when we all come back. Uh, the other the other thing is we're doing is actually we are doing a lot of time studies 
on the products and the processes and we're thinking about things that we can do more efficient. And uh, one thing I just want to mention too is actually, uh, like I, I, am, I, I know I mentioned earlier, but because people have a lot of uncertainty during this time, people are having a lot of burden or worrying about their jobs or worrying about their family. So everybody outside work, they already have a lot to carry. So being an employer or being a, a business leader, you have to be extremely sincere. You have to be very engaged with your team. And actually, you have to understand that uh, this is temporary thing. So it's not a time to actually put people accounted. It's not a time that you put a very strict rule. It's a time actually to keep people together and just keep the business moving. And then when things get back to normal, then that's when you can actually recap and rearrange things back to normality. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, you know something? Darius is super lucky to have you on the team. Uh, uh, you know, I'm it lucky takes. Too. It takes, listen, it takes everyone. I, I know he appreciates you and I can uh, certainly see why. And I appreciate you for coming on and sharing all your great experience uh, with welcome. the audience. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Ari. Thank all you. right, man. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Made in America with Ari Santiago is brought to you by IT Direct. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. I definitely want your feedback and hope you subscribe. But what I want the most is to build a community where we learn and grow with each other. I hope you're getting a lot of value out of the time we're spending together. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time.